turn your Bibles, if you would, to Galatians chapter 3. We're actually picking up on a, a, a series about being redeemed from the curse of the law that we started before uh, the holidays. And of course, during the holidays, we do uh, a lot of uh, other things, which are all great. But we're going to pick back up on this series in Galatians 3, and I'm going to start reading in verse 6. It says, just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Boy, that's an amazing verse. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen by faith preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand saying, in you all nations shall be blessed. So that, this is saying that's what the gospel is. He preached the gospel. In you all nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. That's me. How about you? For as many... As are of the works of the law or under the curse. For it is written, Curses everyone who does not continue in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Say that. The just shall live by faith. This is the answer to so many things, this is how we live. We walk by faith. Everything we do, we do it by faith. And without faith, it's very difficult to please God. Is that true? No, it's impossible. It's impossible to please Him. Uh, so without faith, you don't overcome because this is the victory that overcomes the whole world, our faith. So if it's in the world... Faith can overcome it. What's amazing is uh, you don't have to have all the details. You don't have to understand everything. You just choose to believe. Faith is a choice. So anytime uh, something tries to scare you or uh, cause you to panic, you know, people are saying, uh, what are we going to do? We already know what we're going to do. We're going to trust God. Amen. Don't let it throw you. Uh, even if you don't have a clue how to handle it, I'm trusting that he cares about me and he's going to show me what to do and he's going to bring to me whatever help I need and he's going to bring to me whatever healing I need and he's going to bring to me whatever support I need. He's going to give me whatever wisdom I need. Amen. Whatever I need, he will do. So he already told me that he'd never leave me or forsake me. Amen. So now my part, everybody say my part. My part is believing that. If I'm panicking, if I'm spazzing out, I'm not doing my part. Amen. And it's obvious that I don't believe that. And it's obvious that I'm not in faith. And that's my job to believe. That's my only job. I've got one job. Turn to, turn to somebody and say, you got one job. <laughs> Just do your job. You're a believer. Who ever heard tell of a believer who didn't believe? You ever see someone who had one job and they messed it up? Ooh. So. <laughs> it's my favorite one.
That's horrible. That's at an airport. Goes inside the shell. That's my favorite. You got one job. Don't mess it up. Well, what are we going to do? What, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We already know the answer. We're going to trust God. He always causes us to triumph. Always. We are coming out. Amen. And we who have believed have entered into rest. It, it helped when you're in faith, it helps you just relax. Because when you're panicked and in fear and worried, you're not doing your part. And if you, don't, if you don't do your part, he can't do his part. Because your part is, is what causes his part to react. So you've got the easy part. Just believe. He's got the hard part, making it come to pass. So it, it's not hard for him. It's hard for you to make it come to pass. Not only hard for you, it's impossible for you because you're not the way maker and you're not the healer and you're not the miracle worker. But all you have to do is have faith in the one who is. So we must do our part. The just shall live by faith. So this isn't a, a, a part time or, you know, when a problem comes up, this is how we live. Now, verse 12 in the Amplified says, But the law does not rest on faith, does not require faith, has nothing to do with faith. For it itself says, He who does them, the things prescribed by the law, shall live by them and not by faith. Wow. Now, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. So he, he's not working on it. Uh, he's not in the process of redeeming you. Has. Past tense. Already done. Finished work. Now, uh, what you have uh, been redeemed from, according to this verse, it says, the cur we know we've been redeemed from hell, but let's talk about this verse. You've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Now, if you don't even know what the curse of the law is, then, then you don't know what you've been redeemed from. And, uh, so the way that he did it is by hanging on a tree, on the cross. It, it, it's listed in Deuteronomy 21, uh, Curses everyone who hangs on a tree. So now we got rid of the curse. Look at verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on us in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So now we got the blessing. How did we get it? The last two words, through faith. It is the only way. So notice our only part is faith. He did the work, he became a curse, he hung on a tree, he paid the price, and we are redeemed, we are his child, God is our father. I mean, the, think about that, the angels aren't even redeemed. This is amazing. So redeemed means to buy, or uh, more literally, to buy back, or to buy out. And it specifically, if you study this out, it specifically here refers to purchasing a slave with a view of them being set free. Buying a slave to set them free. It, it specifically refers to that and applies to that. So when you say, he redeemed me, that means I needed to be redeemed. We were in bondage to sin and the curse, and he bought us back to set us free, and I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. But if you don't even know what the curse of the law is that you've been redeemed from, it won't do you any good. And if you don't know what the blessing is that you've been redeemed to, it won't do you any good. 
So when you find out what that is, what the curse of the law is, and then you see anything listed in the curse uh, that you, maybe you have in your life at the time, what you do is you challenge its right to be there. You do that by faith because it says that we might receive by faith the last two words. We just read it in Galatians 3, 13, 14. So here's the deal. Uh, you, there might be things that's been going on in your life. Don't get hung up on the symptoms. Don't get hung up on the physical problem. Don't get hung up on the uh, financial problem because all that is walking by sight and not by faith. We're learning how to walk by faith. We're learning how to call those things that be not as though they were. So our job is not to heal ourselves. Our, our job is not to make everything, you know, instantly change. Our job is to believe. You've got one job. This is how you do that. you got to lift up your voice and say, the curse has no right in my life. Now, this will help you with your uh, uh, biblical theology. The curse is always a curse. It never becomes a blessing in disguise. <laughs> and a blessing is always a blessing and never becomes a curse in disguise. A curse is bad always, and blessing is good, always. Sickness is bad, always, and is never a blessing in disguise. Healing is good, always. And if you've ever been sick and then got healed, you should already know that. It would take some crazy preacher or theologian to make you think any differently, and there are lots of them out there. Brother, Brother Hagen said he heard so many unscriptural and really unsound doctrines being taught by supposed experts and doctors that he decided PhD must mean post hole digger. No offense to any post hole diggers who may be present. That's much more honorable of a profession than a preacher telling you the works of the devil are from God. So here's the definition. A curse is something, and this is from the Hebrew, that's against you. It's something that's harmful. It's something that's destructive. A curse is evil against. It's something that brings down. A blessing is good. That which is beneficial, helps, enables, and empowers. Christ has redeemed us, verse 13, from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone who hangs on a tree. So Jesus redeemed me from everything against me. Everything that's harmful or destructive or brings me down, that the blessing of Abraham, verse 14, might come upon the Gentiles or come upon me in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So he redeemed me to the blessing, good, beneficial, anything that helps, enables, empowers, heals, restores. I'm blessed. I am the blessed. Say, I'm the blessed. I'm blessed. Now, it matters how you talk. Your words show if you agree with the word and what he says or if, you're, if your words are stout against him. And against yourself. Remember, he said that in Malachi, your words are stout against me. And it's a big deal. Have you ever heard when someone says, you know, uh, how good something's, you, you, you know, is going? And then, boy, boy, things have really been going good. And somebody else says, don't say that, you'll jinx it. <laughs> we don't believe in jinx. <laughs> you got a lucky rabbit's foot? Throw it out. I'll tell you something else. You got a St. Christopher's medal? Throw it out. What's wrong with that? We don't pray to saints. That's luck and superstition. And they're replacement for faith in God. There's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. It says that in 1 Timothy 2, 
five. One God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. The, <laughs> the very first commandment, you shall have no other God. One God. And then you shall have no graven image. All of that leaves the impression you're not holy enough, you know, just you. You're not righteous enough for, for you to go to him. Well, that's true, but there's only one who is, the one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He's the only one. All of our faith is in him. So you just have one job, faith in him. Trust him. Now, a, a curse is spiritual power manifest to cause failure. And a blessing is spiritual power manifest to cause success. Both of them are real, and both of them are spiritual. So we've been redeemed from the curse to the blessing, and the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now, in Deuteronomy 28... Deuteronomy 28 uh, is where the curse and the blessing is listed. So how are you going to resist what you've been redeemed from if you don't even know what that is? And how are you going to lay hold of what you've been redeemed to if you don't know what that is? So let me just say this. If you've heard this before, then we're watering seed. And if, if this is new to you, if you haven't heard it, we're planting seed. But both are vital to reap a harvest. My spiritual father said the reason some people don't grow and mature in their faith is they neglect the watering process. They hear something they, they either know or think they know and say, I've heard that, and turn it off. You know what would happen if we turned off our lawn sprinkler? And quit water, even though the seed's been planted and the seed's good. That's what happens to you spiritually when you neglect the watering process. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. So Deuteronomy 28 describes the blessing and the curse of the law. Now, verse 1, it says, Now it shall come to pass... If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Now, the very first thing... The devil says, this is what he did to me when I first read this. Well, this disqualifies you because you haven't been diligently obeying all his commands and carefully observing every law and perfectly obeying his voice. So you have to interpret the Old Testament in the light of the New Testament. None of his blessing come by our works, it comes by his finished work. We're New Testament believers. This is written to spiritually dead people. No one was spiritually alive until Jesus came and paid the price and rose from the dead before anyone could be born again. So he took your place. He died in your place. He hung on a cross and became a curse for you. And curses everyone who hangs on a tree. That or so that the blessing of Abraham might come on you. And this is how you get it. Through faith. Not by uh, uh, perfectly obeying and doing everything just perfect. It's not about your work. It's about his finished work now. Aren't you glad for that? <laughs> he qualified you and made it available to you. But it's only received by faith. So to redeem people, now, now it shall come to pass, not if you did everything perfect, if you've been redeemed by the blood. 
all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. Wow. Because you've been redeemed by the blood. He did it for you and gave it to you. Now, that doesn't mean that it's okay to not keep the words of the law. Now, go, go over to Galatians. We were in Galatians 3 earlier. Galatians 5. And verse, Galatians 5 and verse 16. It says, I say then, walk in the Spirit. Everybody say, walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Now, if you're, if you're not born again, like, like under the old covenant, no one was. You lack the power to overcome. Sin was abounding. So animal sacrifices, uh, a- animal sacrifices were implemented. And that animal blood could not take away sin. It could only uh, uh, cover it. it. It could not cleanse the consciousness of sin. It covered it for a year, and then remembrance had to be made again, typifying what would happen with our sacrifice, Jesus. He went with his own blood into the Holy of Holies and offered the sacrifice that would not just cover, but cleanse. It didn't just covered for a year or for a little while or at all. It's washed away. It's gone doesn't exist anymore. And he even cleanses the consciousness that you could have peace. Isn't that amazing? That, that's why there's no need for, uh, to offer animal sacrifice today because the ultimate and final and perfect sacrifice has been made. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you, not, uh, and, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17 For the flesh has a strong desire against the spirit. And the spirit, a strong desire against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So you're not under the law if you're led by the spirit. Now, let's, uh, let's take the, the Ten Commandments, the law. Number nine, you shall not lie against your neighbor. So th- this is for an example to understand. If you're lying, you're not being led by the Spirit. Number eight, you shall not steal. If you're stealing, you're not being led by the Spirit. Now, when you're saved... The Holy Spirit inside you checks you and says no. So to steal or to lie, you had to ignore that and override it. No one in here has ever ignored it or overridden it. I'm just talking about other places. (laughs) Now here's the deal with the law. It's still good and right. The law's perfect. Well, we're not under the law, so I can do anything. Oh, no. We've just come up to a higher way. We don't have to have a list of do's and don'ts because the author of the book lives inside us. So everything in the new covenant is tied to being led by the Spirit. And that will keep you out of condemnation Because condemnation will undermine your faith. Because everything's received by faith. Uh, That's your job. That's your one job, to believe faith. He's the performer. You're the believer. Now, Now, millions of Christians are depressed and oppressed and diseased and afraid. Well, if it's God's will for them to be healed... They'd be healed. Well, that's like saying if it's God's will for them to be saved, they'd be saved. Salvation has been paid for. It's done. Healing, peace, prosperity, it's already done and belongs to you, but it's only received by faith. 
And that's your part. And it's your only part. Now, there are two components to faith, or it's not faith. Look at Romans 10. And I know that a lot of this is uh, watering, but don't neglect the watering process. Verse 8 of Romans 10. But what does the Word say? The Word is near you, and it's two places. It's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Are you, word of faith? Are you one of those word of faith people? Guilty. I am proud of it. That's the word of faith we preach. If you confess with your mouth, it's two places, your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So faith must be two places. It has to be in your mouth and in your heart. So you got to get that straight. Anything that messes with your faith messes with your life. And you won't be strong to resist the devil, and you won't be strong to receive. So the enemy wants you uh, to live your whole life like you're not blessed. Even though you are, even though it's, you've been redeemed. He wants us to live and act like we're not redeemed. And to most people, that's exactly what's going on. But not me. Because the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Now go back to Deuteronomy 28. We read verses 1 and 2, verse 3. Let's look at verse 3 and 4. Blessed, everybody say blessed, blessed. shall you be in the city, and blessed, say blessed, blessed, shall you be in the country. Blessed, say blessed, blessed, shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flock. What, what does blessed mean exactly? Remember, we looked at when we started this series, God uh, told them after six years of farming on the seventh year to let the land rest. Remember that? And he said, I'm going to bless you so much in the sixth year that uh, you can take the seventh year off. That's the Sabbath. Take the seventh year off. And uh, I'll give you enough heart. I'm going to give you triple. That's not add. That's multiply. I'm going to give you three times as much in the sixth year. So it's going to last you for sixth year harvest, seventh year harvest, and all the way up to the harvest of the eighth year. Wow. So blessing is multiplication, not just adding. Would you rather have nine plus nine or nine times nine? There's a big difference between 18 and 81. Increase. Multiplication. Verse three. Blessed in the city. Blessed in the country. That's blessed everywhere you go. Verse 4, blessed shall be the fruit of your body, produce of your ground, increase of your herds, increase of your cattle, offspring in your flock. Your kids are blessed and increase and multiplied. You should be believing God for that. None of this is automatic, but it all belongs to you. And it's all received by one. You have one part. You believe it. And faith has two components, what you believe and what you say. Amen. So just do your part. Your ground, herds, cattle, flocks are blessed and multiplied. That was, their, that was their business. So increase in whatever your business is. Blessed, increase, multiplied. You should be using your faith for that. You're blessed. Your hands are blessed. Everything your hands touch, prosper. Your business is blessed. Your home is blessed. You should be saying that and agreeing with that. Use your faith for that. Verse 5. Blessed shall be your basket and your store. 
Verse 6, blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed when you go out. Well, you're either coming or going. That's all the time. The, verse 7, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Wow. Now, here's something else that the blessing does for you. It's against your enemy. Causes confusion. Causes chaos in the enemy's camp. This blessing is something else. This is God talking to you. The Lord will command the blessing. Wow. On, your, uh, uh, on you in your storehouses, plural, and in all to which you set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Wow. So multiplication on your storehouses. So the, the storehouse, uh, it mentioned that earlier, your store, uh, that's what you operate out of. Your storehouses, that's not, what, that's not even what you operate out of. That's like your savings. And he's going to command. He added a word here. Didn't have to say that. He added a word for emphasis. Command the blessing on your storehouses. Command multiplication on your storehouses. Well, that just, that just seems a little much. I don't know if I believe that. Well, you don't have to be bothered. It's not going to work for you. Because this is all by faith. I mean, if you don't believe that, just rip. <laughs> just rip that page out. <laughs> Not going to need that. You go to ripping out pages, the stuff doesn't line up with your religion. You may not have much left. What if we just changed and started believing Him and His Word? We've had this strange thinking about God. You don't have to even think up your own thoughts about God. Just find out what this says, not what some crazy theologian or some crazy preacher says. What about just what the Bible says? He will command the blessing on you in your storehouses. Wow. The Lord will establish you a holy people set, set apart to himself. Just as he swore to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the people of the earth shall see you are called by the name of the Lord, and they'll be in awe of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Wow. Plenteous in goods. Not bads. Goods. Well, now God doesn't care about material things. He used to. When exactly did he change? Show me that scripture. But I do have one that says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. Man has changed. Man's theology has changed. How about we just get back to what God said to begin with? The Lord will open to you his good treasure. The heaven to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. And you shall lend to many and not have to borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day and are careful to observe them. If you are redeemed from the curse, and you know that you are, and you receive it by faith. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. I'm telling you, he desires to bless you. And if he can get this word into us, 
It will change everything in our life. It'll change our home. It'll change your joy level. It'll change your peace level. It'll change your physical body. It'll change your business. It'll change your mind. It'll change your finance. It will change everything. If we just come in line with this, it's all received by faith. Just have faith in His Word. Forget all the other stuff everybody else has told you and all your own thoughts and all your own reasoning and just go back to this and walk in this. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, I pray. If there's anyone in here that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, they wouldn't walk out these doors without making a decision for you, and I ask you for that in Jesus' name. Just for a moment, while every head's bowed and every eye closed, uh, if you, if you don't know that heaven's your home, if, if you've never been born again, been saved, received the Lord, we have all different terminology, and you've heard probably some of that, may not have understood it if you didn't grow up in church. Well, we get it all from the Bible, and it all boils down to this one thing. If you don't know for sure, if you were to die in your sleep tonight, that you'd go to heaven, you can know. This is not a hope-so salvation. This is a no-so salvation. So if you're in here and you don't know for sure, you can know before you walk out. Maybe there's someone here that you say, well, I have received the Lord and I've served God, but I've kind of been going my own way, doing my own thing, but I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. If that's anybody in here, And the third invitation is this. If you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you it's the most powerful thing that will happen to you in this life. And if you don't even know what that is, when this service is over, we will have prayers in this altar. And I mean, they know how to pray heaven and earth together. And you can uh, come up for anything, not just these, these invitations that I'm giving now. But if you need prayer for anything, for healing, whatever you need, you can come up and receive prayer always at the end of our services. So just for a moment, and our heads are just bowed in reverence to God, this is because this is between you and God. If you don't know for sure, if you died in your sleep tonight, or you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, just slip your hand up real quick for me so I can see I see that and I see that. Thank you. Anybody else in the room before we all pray together? We're all going to pray this prayer. Anybody else? I just want to pray for you personally. All right. There might be some that are joining us online. I think it'd be good if we all prayed this prayer. Let's all make a new commitment to him. Lift one hand up toward heaven. That's where your help comes from. Say this after me and mean it with your heart. Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me with your precious blood and make me whole, and I'll follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, come on and give him thanks that heaven's your home.